Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. My name is Jonathan Rector. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And uh, we're back on a day two here of uh, waking up crazy early and uh, getting some work done. And again, got nothing to say except positive things. Um, I would highly recommend trying it. And that's enough of that. Um, so I'm just going to pan back a bit here to show you guys uh, how far I made it since yesterday. And it doesn't really look like a lot when you when you kind of pull back and see everything. But uh, this is the panel we finished. Uh, it took about an hour. And uh, I went back and I finished this panel here of our Hero of the Standard, walking down the hallway into that creepy door. And down here, let me just turn the rough off so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And here we have him actually going into the room, looking down the hallway and stuff. So uh, where I was finishing, I was right here. I'm just going to continue going on on this one. <clears throat> right, let's just see if we can get a different kind of brush here. All right. Okay. It's definitely been um, one of those mornings has just been a little slow start. I feel like I'm still trying to wake up. <laughs> But it's all right. Uh, now this panel, uh, when we go to ink it, actually it's gonna be kind of fun. I don't think we're going to ink it uh, today. I'm gonna actually try working on the rest of the tight line art for the page. But uh, I'm hoping to get some pretty cool like lighting effects. Uh, so we'd be doing something like this. Let me just go to the ink layer. I'll show you. And most likely be uh, let's turn the ruler layer off. There's a guy in the other room where the rest of the page goes, and he's watching TV. And ideally, we would like it to have, or like it to be, the only actual light source outside of like the hallway, and maybe something else here in the house. So we're gonna do this kind of effect here, where there's like the light coming from the end of the end of the hallway, kind of thing. Hey, how's it going? Love the username. <laughs> ah, good stuff. Um, and then what I was thinking of doing is maybe we can get some stacked lighting going on where maybe there's like extra light coming from uh, the hallway here. And how we would do that, uh, let me just actually, let's just draw that one too. So this would kind of be coming straight out like that. Same with here. And who knows, uh, I think what I'll do is kind of have it going up against the wall as well. It'll look kind of cool. There you go, like that. And a lot of this is actually going to be blacked in. Let's take a look at how this is going to look here. So we start filling the rest of that in with black. Oops. And the idea here is just to make it, uh, I guess, extra creepy. If that makes any sense. So even something like that. So you know, I don't know. Do you see what I'm talking about there? It makes it look a little cooler. You got some depth going on here, and it makes it look like there's an extra light source coming in from the other side. Uh, I think most of this stuff here is going to be just blacked out like that. Uh, probably even go ahead and black all of this here. I don't want there to be too many light sources going on. I think we're going to end up just inking this <laughs> this whole freaking panel here. Let's just get a thicker line going here, just for like a contour layer. There we go. 
a little bit better. I just want to let you guys know too, I, I forgot to, I apologize, I forgot to say at the beginning. Um, if you guys did have a question, if you guys needed uh, any help with anything, uh, feel free to just post it into the chat. Um, you do need an account, it's free, it's pretty quick. And uh, just, if you do have a question asked, I would just ask that you post it in all caps. Um, just makes it a little bit easier to, to find once I've been, when I, once I start rambling, which I usually do. Uh, let me just see how this is going to look. If the roof's all shaded. Uh, I kind of dig it. So yeah, it's going to look something like that. Uh, this will probably be all blacked out. Like that. So it just gives a little bit more of a dramatic feel when you get like light coming across. A really good artist to check out if you're into this kind of lighting. That Well, obviously does a way better job than I do. Uh, Eduardo Rizzo. And uh, he does work on 100 Bullets. I talk about him all the time. Uh, Frank Miller especially in like Sin City, does a phenomenal job as well. But Eduardo Rizzo, he's got a way of like stacking shadows and light um, without really using much line work, which is, I don't know, that's, it's pretty crazy to see. And it looks really awesome. Okay, so let's get to the next panel here. Trying to move on here. All right, so this is another one of those shots. Um, pretty easy more one point perspective just looking down here and we got the guy watching uh, what appears to be a slasher fi a flick uh, kind of like the slasher flick we had in the first issue and um, I'm a big fan of uh, Jason from Friday the 13th so this guy on the TV anyway really resembles that about these kinds of scenes uh, there's a lot of shadow work um, so I don't want to say the pages come out quicker because they do but um, they're a little bit different of a thought process and you know you can get away with doing things like this where there's a lot of black being thrown in there and it actually you know excels quite a bit of uh, gives you some emotion some extra you know power behind some of your stuff if you're able to do it, just zoom out, see how that's looking. All right. Don't like the curve of these guys, so I'm just going to highlight them. I'm just going to rotate it here. That's a little better. Just throw the cape over top here. Uh, Horace is asking, do you ever use Copic or Copic? I don't know how people like to pronounce it. Markers? Uh, why or why not? I've actually only really used them once, at, and it was probably three months ago now. It was at uh, a local drink and draw, and uh, the hostess there she brought a pack of um, of the markers. I'm not a big fan of, you know drawing with them in color I'll be probably because I haven't really used them but uh, she did have the black and white ones and the gray I did use a lot of the gray um, they were really sweet uh, it was really fun to work with those um, I would actually probably get the gray ones just for like use in my sketchbook uh, my only problem is the cost they're they're up there and I like to work as cheap as I possibly can when I can. Um, if, if it's something like working digital, if I can get something like I have right now, some sort of tablet that can speed things up, I'll definitely go that route. But um, because of the cost, I usually don't play around with art supplies that often. Uh, actually, I have, um, I, I bought, what was it, a, one of those like calligraphy type pens for inking. It's the same with an, like an inkwell. 
I bought that probably like a year ago, and it's still sitting in my cupboard. Uh, I just have not had a chance to take them out and try them. Um, finding time to experiment with new things is a little, little rare these days. But all that is to say, um, yeah, I think they're really cool. There might be cheaper alternatives, I'm not sure. But I know a lot of people, they'll just use it for like the gray. And even if you just scan the, the gray in Photoshop or whatever, you can quickly just add color over top of the gray. So if it's going digital at any point, yeah, why not? Are oh, you using them for shading too? Sweet. So I'm not the only one. <laughs> All right, so we got the standard in the front there. I'm just gonna quickly add like a thicker contour line over top. these smooth lines a lot in my drawings so I try to get like these sharp edges kind of poke it up around and stuff where are Rempa like right there I'd rather be sharp edges just I don't know I feel like it looks cooler So let's just zoom out. And uh, what that did is just make him pop up a little bit more. So if I turn that off just so you guys can see it. So that's it without it. And then that's it there. Just so it makes him, you know, it adds that depth that we're trying to get. Just pull a chair up here. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the foreground background. Uh, so we'll say F. BG. Now we grab our markers again, and let's draw this one. Oops. Do that on the other side here. enough detail there. Uh, question from Turtle Man. Uh, do you charge per page or like an hourly rate? Uh, I charge page rate and the only real reason for that is I, th at least to this day, uh, for comic book work, I'm pretty sure that's just how it goes. I don't think it, it's, it's more illustration heavy. It's not, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, if you work in, let's say, graphic design, I, I really don't know what the difference is. I guess you could charge whatever you want. If you wanted to charge hourly, go ahead. Um, but it just depends on if your clients want to pay it, right? And that's that's up to you. You can do whatever you want. Um, every job I've ever had, at least in comics, it's all been page rates. Which is, um, I don't know, I guess it's an old school way of getting paid, really. Sometimes it sucks, sometimes, uh, well, depends how quick you are too, right? For me, I'm I'm pretty slow. I used to be quicker, but, uh, you know, let's say you're doing this as your full-time job. 
you you probably expected to do a page a day minimum, and for me, pages can take anywhere between six to sixteen hours, right? So that's a day, and let's say your page rate's forty bucks. That's about the uh, I would say the independent comic average is about forty. Uh, I've seen some go as high as sixty. So that's in between there. You do get the the rare project here and there that uh, slides you a little bit more than that. But when you break down the math, <laughs> it's usually never uh, usually never that high, unless of course you're working for like uh, a major publisher, or if you're in an independent and you guys were able to land like a contract through a publisher. That's that's something else. Uh, then, then the money's going to be a little bit well, noticeably better. But, uh, you know, there's always that stigma people throw around where there's no money in comics. Uh, and, I mean, I agree as long as it's not that you're trying to, I don't know, walk away rich. It's just whatever you, you need to live. Um, the way I look at it, if I'm saving money, if I'm able to put food on the table kind of thing, and I could provide for myself, um, I'm happy with that. Uh, one of the things I really got over quickly, I'd say about four or five years ago now, uh, when I tried to, or not tried, but was doing some freelance work, and that was my sole income, it was like, you quickly stop worrying about video games, uh, movies, every now, movies start to become a little bit more easy, because you can just sit down and watch it, video games are a little bit heavier of an uh, entry price, or point, uh, excuse me, um, and there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with video games. Um, but uh, the more time that I would spend playing video games, I just felt like it was, you know, they were just counterproductive. All that's to say, whatever it is in your life that you like to spend a lot of money on, if you could find ways to um, get a hold of that so it doesn't get run wild on you, I think you'll notice some big returns on your stuff anyway. And yeah, 40 60 bucks a page isn't a lot. It's not, especially if that's your day of work. Um... But it is enough money to get by, provided you don't buy a boat <laughs> and that kind of thing. If you have kids and stuff, yeah, it's a little different. Uh, I still ultimately say, unless you just like working in this workflow with like other people, I'm a big like I love working with all the creative teams that I've ever worked with. Uh, but every now and then, uh, at least one of the routes that I would like to end up going this year is starting to make a shift towards in independent work. And by uh, independent work, I mean, you know, comics that uh, I write myself, uh, that I make myself. Maybe I'll end up trying to hire a colorist as well, just so that, uh, you know, I can speed things up, uh, if I can afford it. And ultimately, if um, I can make money off that long term, that's not stuff that'll just turn around. Uh, my YouTube stuff, for example, like everybody that's in here, this is taking about, you know, around at least a year to get going. I apologize for the sniffles. I got the allergies again today. But, uh, yeah, you know. Just find the little things that make you happy. And uh, one thing I should say as well. This is, you know, it's pretty important. If you're not happy with what you're doing, you gotta. it's up to you to figure out what it is you can do to fix it. Don't just wait for other people. Uh, that come, You know, that goes everywhere, even if it's just with your art. Or if it's um, kind of going back to what I was saying a little bit earlier with if you want like a bigger page rate and stuff. Um, have you ever broken your drawing hand or arm and how do you deal with it? Uh, I have never broken a bone in my body so far. <laughs> So, no, I haven't. And I'm sure just by saying that, I'm gonna something bad's going to happen today. Um, but I was actually thinking, when I was in college, uh, I took animation in college. I didn't go all the way through. Um, but one of my college professors, he was actually saying, what do you mean? I don't think he was a professor. He's in art. So, we'll just say one of my teachers. Uh, what, it was like an art fundamental class, animation history or something. And I don't know how this topic got started, but... It made me really think, and I've never forgot it, and I haven't 
Actually, I'll tell you about that in a second here, uh, where I have it, but he was talking about getting insurance, or he knew a lot of artists that would get insurance on his drawing hand. And I suppose it might actually be more, <laughs> more if you try to get your whole arm insured, but uh, I plan on going to like my insurance company seeing if they do it if they don't maybe call around just to see I, I honestly have no idea how much it costs to insure my wrist because I know it sounds weird right like people are always like oh you're going to insure parts of your body why would you do that but uh, for people like myself if I can't draw that's income that I can't get right um, and it goes into like a whole other thing like claiming money that for art that you do and stuff like that but again I got to find out more information um, when I do get into that I sh it should probably be pretty soon actually I'll come back and I'll let you guys know. Try to remind me in case I do forget. Um, I'm going to assume it's going to be, you know, a good thing. Anything that helps you uh, stay drawing is probably pretty positive. Uh, but what I was leading at earlier, what I was saying was, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a tickler folder. Sounds a little... A little questionable um, but what it is is um, you get like a, a hanging file folder or if you have a uh, what's it called filing cabinet and you get uh, I think it's 43 folders in there or something like that uh, in each folder you have like uh, January February March all the way up to December so that's your 12 folders then you make 31 folders numbered 1 2 3 all the way to 31 and what you do is you have whatever month it is, you have the files 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 30. And then behind those, that's where the months start going in. So let's say you're starting in December. How it would look is you'd have your files 1, 2, 3, all the way to 31. And then behind that, it would go January, February, March. And then once uh, the first, like uh, December 1st is done, and it's the second, you take the first folder and you put it in the back of January, so then the next folder that you see is two, and you just keep moving it back. I know it sounds a little weird, but the idea behind that is you could leave little notes for yourself, uh, reminders, um, due dates, anything like that where you don't need to think about it, it's all there, and when the day comes up, you're always refreshing it, so you're opening up the new file folder, and you'll have some stuff in there. Um, now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, this insurance thing, that's going to take some stuff. You know, i got to call around, look around, you know, make some calls, do some research online, that kind of stuff. So it's a project. It's going to take more than just get insurance on arm or wrist. And uh, so what happens is once that day comes around, I'll just open it up and then I can start looking into getting the research stuff. But it's pretty cool, that Tickler uh, system. I've been using it for uh, probably close to a a month now and it's really cool with just like project ideas as well if you get something that you're just thinking about like uh, I'll be posting something I don't know about today or tomorrow I forget when it's coming up just ask people about prints have you guys ever made uh, your own custom prints and tried to sold them or anything so I'll throw the question out there just to see what you guys say and what resources people can provide you know like so I know people have done this so I could just kind of use some of the research everybody else has done and figure it out but I don't have to worry about when that's coming up because it'll show up you know in the in the file but anyway check it out tickler system it sounds kind of cool I'd give it a give it a try especially if you're into this kind of stuff um, oh you broke what's that you broke your hand and have that cast for three months oh man so how are you handling it are you just kind of getting by or did you start trying to learn to draw with your other hand or Oh, that's horrible, man. I can't even I can't even imagine if I broke my arm or my hand. I've heard some people they get so uh, protective of their hands as well, or their wrists, and they'll always wear like uh, let's say they're even doing dishes. <laughs> and what they'll do is. Uh, They'll use like the rubber gloves and all that, just so that nothing happens to their hand. 
uh, they'll, they'll massage their wrist every night and stuff. It sounds weird, and as you get older, you'll probably start doing it more. I've noticed that, like, my wrist, the stamina in it, play along for a sec here. <laughs> the stamina in my wrist isn't what it used to be. Uh, so now I always usually wear this, like, um, wristband, and I go through them probably one every few months because the, the stretch, the, elastic, the elasticity in it doesn't hold like it used to. So it's not keeping the muscles and everything tight in there. And I don't know if you guys have ever done this. One thing that should probably scare the living hell out of you is go research online when you have carpal tunnel how they fix that surgically, okay? And real quick, if you don't know what carpal tunnel is, if you have your, your hand and you just put your arm out in front of you, okay? So that you're kind of like, um, if you ever watch Dragon Ball Z, you know, they charge up and they got their, their hands, kind of like you're, you're lifting a weight with your left hand or something like that. If you squeeze and make a fist right near your wrist, you'll see like those veins pop in. And usually there's like a, a line that kind of indents in there. And you can put your finger in there. There's two, the two bones that make up your forearm. They twist and they rotate. It's not a solid bone, okay? And what happens is over time with carpal tunnel, at least my understanding, is there's a muscle in between those two um, bones that keep them together. What happens over time is that starts to rip apart. And it causes a lot of stress around this uh, another muscle that wraps around like a like an elastic band around your wrist, and that and that band right there actually tightens up to bring your fingers together. So that tunnel, carpal tunnel, that tunnel is actually what's ripping in the middle of it. And anything that rips on your body, muscle-wise, has got to hurt like hell. So what they'll do to give your uh, wrist relief is that uh, elastic band that's around your wrist. They'll cut it and ha they'll just snap, like cut it. And then what that does is now it's loose and then they sew it back together so it's looser, right? And it gives you more relief. But what happens is that means you can't make a complete, closed, powerful fist anymore. Which means you don't get as much control as you used to. You could probably get over that, but your drawing is going to take a hit. I'll guarantee you that. But that's not even it. Did that even, like, that scares me. I don't want nobody cutting my wrist open. That's crazy. So there's got to be ways to like fix it, and even if that just means maybe you got to massage it every day, or just all of this is to say is take care of your wrist, take care of your arm. Don't try your best anyway not to go out like that. That'd be a horrible way to stop being an artist, you know. Your wrist just gave out on you. That sucks. And I know a lot of artists have had that happen. My grandparents, they've got uh, carpal tunnel, and they weren't even artists. They just got old. So I think just being being uh, aware of it, just just take care of yourself. That's all. <laughs> you can't have anything but pins. Oh Jesus! What happened to your your hand? Doesn't sound like you had a good time. <laughs> Sniffles. He's out there. A shirt? No, he doesn't have a shirt. Cool. Alright, so this panel's almost done too. Pretty good. We're moving on at a pretty good clip. I was playing Australian rules football and my finger snapped sideways. Ugh. Oh my god. The best part is like as artists we're like immobile usually, right? And then this guy's out there trying to, you know, take care of himself and he snaps his fingers up. Uh who was it? Frank Frazetta, I believe. 
he had a stroke, yeah? And uh, he started to learn how to draw with his other hand. It's going to take some time. I don't know, man. Like, that's just... Oh, I'm sorry, man. That's horrible. Especially from one artist to another. Like, there's few things I would wish on anybody. And having, like... Having you not be able to draw, that's... Oh. I'm sorry, man. I know there's nothing I can do or anybody in here can do, but... God. Oh my goodness. Okay. Alright, we've got one last thing here to put in, and move on to the next one. Oh, man. And we're about uh, at the halfway point of the show, so I just want to say thanks to everybody that stopped by and everybody that's chatting in the room. Uh, appreciate it when you guys do stop by. Um, just to let you know, if you guys do have any comments or questions, feel free to post it in the chat. I would just ask that you post it in all caps so that I can see it and uh, appreciate it. And don't be shy. <laughs> if you've got a question, chances are somebody else has a question as well. It's probably a similar one, so I'd be helping a lot of people out, uh, providing I can even answer for you. But uh, okay, so let's start talking a little bit about um, what else has been going, going on. Okay, so since I've been waking up like grandparents early <laughs> uh, I've noticed uh, you know obviously you get tired quicker towards the end of the day so around 7 or 8 I start to really ugh, start just wanting to pass out and uh, you know that's fine makes sense we're up at like 4 um, but I experienced something last night that was weird uh, and what it was was literally boredom in a way you know I was I was awake I was up uh, everything was fine I got home I uh, didn't have to work on comics book or comics books <laughs> comic book pages like the standard because I had already done it this morning I put a solid dent into it and that's the whole point of waking up early is that you get the most important work done of the day and uh, that way later on in the day you don't have to do it or if you can't get to it it's okay you already did it and I don't know, it was weird. Uh, all of a sudden, I was like, what can I, what do I do? <laughs> uh, so I started working on uh, some uh, Jessup King stuff. That's my own work. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's refreshing to know that when I come home tonight, I can work on my own comics again and not feel guilty about it. And I don't know if that sounds weird to you guys or not, but uh, I don't know only three days into this thing so it's it's probably me just being all like <laughs> you know swooning over it for no reason at all hey Zelda what you doing hey what you doing oh you wanna fight you wanna fight And Hob, Hobbs Art is saying, um, makes sense. Guilt is a huge factor in my productivity. Yeah. Especially, like, if you haven't really done the work that you should be doing for the day. And the day's kind of wrapping up. And you start to get into, I'm just going to do this. You know? And it's not drawing. Your stuff usually catches up on you. It's not fun. Kind of beat yourself. I beat myself up over it a little bit. All right, let's get the slasher flick back there done. All right, so we're going to make this blue. And see so if we get the pencil tool. Usually I don't use a pencil tool, but it's kind of quick and dirty stuff here. 
All right, so he's kind of got a Jason mask. I'm going to have to pull up some reference just to make sure I get it right. Uh, I'm going to have him kind of come straight at us. I have an arm way up in the foreground here. Lots of blood. And the, another thing here, a uh, little art tip. Or I don't say art tip. I don't like those that kind of talk. But comic tip is uh, foreshadowing, which is basically in any good storytelling, right? Movies do it all the time. You see a guy playing or a guy playing with a gun in the beginning, probably going to use it at the end, or something's going to happen within the story that's going to require that gun to be shot in order to fix something, solve something, move the plot forward, that kind of stuff. Uh, so in this case, our hero is probably walking into either a murder scene or at least some violence. So what I'm doing is I'm making whoever this is that's sitting in front here watching a horror movie. And I'm throwing a lot of blood on this because actually the next couple pages, uh, you guys will probably see tomorrow and stuff, is a big fight scene. It's only a page, but uh, it's quite a bit of blood. A lot of people are getting messed up. So if I can... Even if whoever's reading this doesn't think, oh man, this is foreshadowing something violent... What I'm hoping to get out of it is that it gives the viewer and the reader maybe a little sense of discomfort, a little bit, that something's not right. You know, like if this guy was just watching football or something, you know, that could totally work to it as well. You wouldn't think about, like, uh, maybe this guy's got a hole in the head. He got shot or something, you know, like that kind of classic stuff. And if he's watching football, you might not really think anything's wrong until you see him, which might add to the surprise. Um... And that's totally a doable thing. It's kind of like your call when you're making your own comics and stuff, right? But as long as you're thinking about that kind of thing, uh, usually it translates pretty well into uh, your comic. So just be aware of, like, let's say when I had the uh, previous panel up there when he walks into the hallway, what if there's, like, newspapers all over the floor? Like, it looks like there's a struggle. It makes things just feel a little different, right? Like, something's off pictures aren't exactly straight on the wall. Well, who does that? Who has pictures not straight on the wall, right? It just gives you, hopefully, a sense of uh, unease. And I'm just trying to find something here. Uh, I just need the reference for that. Loading, loading, loading. I'll bring it up on screen here so you guys can see it. Uh, is it that one? Okay, yeah. So this is uh, issue one. And this is the bottom panel here. See, at first he was listening to a, a, a cologne commercial for the standard. <laughs> and then it turns into like this character here. He's basically like Jason from Friday the 13th, just with one eye and the machete. Again, just trying to play on things that people rem remember and know. Uh, so this kind of slasher movie is going to be... Or is going to still be playing uh, here. Most people, they probably wouldn't even notice that it's from the first issue. Maybe the diehard people that are your big fans, they might notice something like that. But um, that's not really the point. And as well, uh, always take any moment you can to get motion going into your your um, your panels, right? So here, there's not much motion. It's just people staring. Here is going to be a lot of motion. we got blood splatter. And even his arms are going this way, which still leads the eye to come to here, which is all black, which is going to lead us back down in the other pages. So um, it's working on a lot of levels. So pretty much good to go then. Let's go in here and draw this guy. I'm just going to turn uh, my roughs down a little bit more. All right, so we're going to give him a big old shoulder. And I'll probably rip up his clothes a little bit. pinch points in there. Helps give us some motion too. I'll get that mask. 
mask on. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to like kind of change it up a little bit. And really funk up his ear. Make his skin all nasty too. And a lot of this stuff, uh, when we get to the rendering and the inking of this, actually sell this a little bit better. Uh, Hobsart's asking a question about how long on average does it take you to knock out a full issue? Uh, <laughs> I asked because I have been hacking with the same issue for a couple months. Uh, good morning, John. Um, and for those of you that don't know, John, uh, he's the writer for this actual book as well. No stranger to the show. Um, okay, so that question is amazing because John's timing is phenomenal. Um, and uh, John, why don't, why don't you let the... the <laughs> The beautiful people in the chat room know how long it's taken me to do, uh, let's say, one issue of the standard. Better yet, uh, I'm working on issue four right now. After this page, I've got two pages left. This issue will be done this week, okay? So, John, how long has it taken me to do four issues of the standard? If you wouldn't mind sharing with everybody. <laughs> Here we go. Well, thus far, here's the breakdown. And I'm going to just state right now that I'm ashamed of this. Um, there have been many factors. I don't want to just turn this into a giant excuse fest. Um, but there have been, especially the last last year around this time, was real rough for me. Uh, some personal stuff that had happened, it was real, real effed up. Um, a lot of life changes were happening and stuff, so it was like, you know, you've got work you got to do, but at the same time, you know, life likes to be life and do whatever it wants when it wants. Uh, let's get rid of that. We don't need that. Okay, so John was saying, issue one was done in 2010. So essentially, three years, guys. So you're looking at almost like a year for an issue, which is totally unacceptable. Um, but anyway, issue one was 2010. Issue two was 2011. Issue three is 2012. And issue four is 2013. So, you know, um, and he's saying, though, I will say that's not entirely accurate, as there have been times where John was doing other projects in between. Uh, exactly. And, and I mean, again, but I like to be honest with you guys. I don't like to put up some fake, <laughs> you know, that I'm hammering out issues every day, you know. But yeah, I have done other projects while this was going on. Um, in the beginning, there, the, there was deadlines and time frames and stuff, but they weren't as uh, immediate as they need to be right now. Um... <laughs> Now that we're actually get we've, we're published and stuff like that, it's it's a little bit different. Uh, but I did get a new job and stuff like that. Uh, it's actually it's weird. It's uh I work at a video game company now, and it's and this will sound really weird. And I you know I apologize if I'm getting too like sappy with you guys, but it's uh it's a full time job, and it's probably like the first full time job I've ever had. That's not like retail or. A factory work and that's usually the work that I would always have when I was doing my comics is I would always be working either a retail job uh, like I'm sure most of you guys are or a factory job so I sympathize with anybody that does that stuff you know the factory job especially you know working 12 hour shifts like ugh, talk about trying to find time and I can only imagine if some of you guys and girls out there uh, are doing that and you wish you could be doing more comic work, but you're doing that and you also have like a family or a kid or kids. 
in ways, in many ways, I'm fortunate enough not to know what that's like. But none of the other ways, you know, I know you guys have a family and uh, all that kind of cool stuff. So you're experiencing things that I am not able to experience, you know, with uh, your own family and stuff. So there's there's pros and cons to everything. But uh, let's say I did have all of my time to focus on on a single comic. It would take me, uh, I would guarantee a month for like 22 pages. Uh, the standard's 28 pages plus a cover. So it's usually about a month and a half. And I know that sounds probably a little weird because over three years, almost four years, I guess, I've only hammered out like an issue. So it's like a lot of months <laughs> that issues aren't happening. All right, so we got J or our version of some sort of serial killer here. Our rip off of Jason. Uh, let me just delete that. So that panel's done now. Sweet. So we're just going through these panels like clockwork. Uh, what else is John saying there? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Issue one was actually done really fast, but I'd only hired you for that issue at that time, and you had other jobs lined up afterwards, taking you through the rest of the year. So I hired you for two to six issue two to six, and that began in 2011. And again, 2011 was done in a reasonably quick time frame. The big delay in issue two was you transitioning from print to digital, which meant the process in the early pages was a bit slow as you learned the format. And I've said this before, and you know, I'll bring it up right now since John was just talking about it. Uh, if you guys actually go back whew, to almost the start of this channel, I was making my transition to doing digital work uh, from Photoshop buying that uh, DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics and trying to learn that whole workflow. Um, but John was, um, you know, a classy enough guy, thankfully, that, uh, you know, I told him, and I've told this story before, where I did a, a pinup of one of the characters, and I told him, you know, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just give me some time to try to get this pinup done in, in uh, Photoshop. If we don't like the way it turns out, or if it looks like it deviates too much from what we already have, I'll go back to the way I was doing the book before. And the way I was doing it before was just pencils, and then I would darken them up in Photoshop and clean it up. They do look pretty rough and pretty gross, but you can do it. You know, it's got a, it's a different style to it. And all of issue one is done that way. Issue two, the first couple pages or first few pages are done that way, and then the rest is digital. And, and since then, like, if I put this up to the very first thing that I did digitally, it'd be night and day, I'll tell you that, guys. Um, but some of us, you know, we get fortunate we're able to work with cats that are um, willing to let you experiment a little bit. And rarely do people let you actually experiment on their book. <laughs> so, again, thank you so much, John, again, for letting me do that. But, yeah, there's always been little hiccups here and there for this book. And I find, like, any of the projects that I've really ever been on that are uh, pretty beefy in size, something happens. I don't know what it is, but these bigger projects, and by bigger I mean anything that's more than an issue, they seem to attract, <laughs> like, things that'll test you, you know, things that'll really push you as an artist. Which is obviously good, you know? But they'll make you learn other things, not only about yourself, but creative tricks to get through solution or creative solutions or tricks that'll get you um, to the end of a project. Uh, in this case, uh, there is, you know, there's some heavy stuff that uh, John and I, we've been going through uh, over email, uh, including the editor, stuff with the publisher about turnaround time on pages and stuff and uh, you know I was getting really down in the dumps just I I was you know I hated my workflow I, I was I just felt like as a penciler or in this case an anchor that's if you're the guy responsible or the girl responsible for doing the art itself uh, there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of freedom don't get me wrong um, you know, I get a script, but I'm able to tell that script how I want. And John and the editor, uh, Stephen, Stephen Forbes, they always get their opinion. They're always allowed to share. They're always allowed to add or take away. But they're hiring me to bring their story to life, visually, artistically, 
Um, a lot of people like to think of it like you're a director. That's definitely one way of thinking about it. You're choosing the shots, the angles, all that stuff. There's a lot, there's so much creative power and freedom in that. It's why I love comics. Even if I'm drawing for somebody else. Just being able to help bring somebody else's story to life. Th that and then like communicating with you guys and just talking to other creative people that are into comics and stuff. Man, it's one of those fields that I've, I'm fortunate to be in that I've never really... I can't express in any other way. I work in video games, uh, in a small video game setting now, and it's very similar to this workflow, but it's not exactly the same. You know, you're still asked to do your job. I'm an artist, so I'm doing art. I'm drawing comics right now, so I'm doing art, but at the same time, I'm getting hired to bring this to life my own way as well. I kind of uh, forget why I was deviating into that. <laughs> oh, man. I go rambling and forget what I'm talking about. Uh, what were we saying? Maybe it'll come back to me. I apologize. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's just see here. Uh, Hobbs Art is saying, uh, also, you are penciling and inking. Essentially, having to draw all pages twice on top of a job makes sense. Okay, yeah, okay, back then it was for sure. Digitally, it doesn't really feel like penciling. It kind of does, but everything seems quicker digital. I don't know what it is. Okay, that's where I was going with that. Um, okay, so the stress of being a penciler and an, uh, <laughs> the main artist on the book, let's say. Everybody is waiting for you. Once John or the writer is done, uh, initially, he's, he's done. He just uh, critiques, asks for changes, and then, then he's doing behind-the-scenes stuff, like probably promoting, marketing, all that kind of stuff. Usually that's what the writer ends up doing. Your rest of your creative team, the colorist can't color anything until he gets, or let's just say you're doing pencils. The inker can't do nothing until the pencils are done. Then the colors can't do anything until the inks are done. And the letterer can't do anything until, uh, that's not true. The letterer can do work over the inks. You don't need the wait for the colors. But there's a workflow there. It all starts from the artist. And that's where I was getting stressed out about where, like, it was just taking me a while to do stuff. Again, uh, things in life that were happening it's hard to find the time to do it not that you don't want to do it never it's nothing ever about that it's just hard to find the time to do it and now the entire project is getting stalled and uh, literally just recent we were we were you know still going through emails talking about like how are we going to fix this how are we going to get our little ship and our little baby back in the water and uh Get her where she needs to go. And, uh, you know, I kind of just sent out an email. Letting everybody know how I was feeling. And, uh, you know, just... I don't want to say put the pride away for a second, but just I was just being honest with people. You know, usually when you're honest with people, that's when you get your best results with stuff. And I'm not lying or anything like that, but I just wanted to let everybody know on the team, like, not how I was feeling, nothing like that, but... What's going on, and if anybody could have a solution or something I could try that I might be able to fix this kind of stuff, please share. Uh, it's going to help everybody. It's going to get the book done. It's going to get, you know, all all it could lead to is positive. You know, anybody that's going to start talking negative garbage, they can say it privately or, you know. Okay, this guy's got alien fingers happening here. One second. Um, anyway, so this gets back into like what I've been talking about, what I've been preaching about <laughs> for the last little bit, about this waking up early garbage. And uh, essentially the whole point of it, and so far, I mean, uh, you know, John could probably attest to it already. There's more progress happening in the last three days on this, on this book that's happened probably in a good month or two. And it's literally because I'm just squaring away, you know. Yeah, I get, I'm exhausted as soon as I get up. I'm still getting seven, eight hours of sleep. So I'm not losing sleep. It's just that transition to get it. Like, uh, rolling out of bed still. Ugh. You know, it's not like I jump up going, yeah, comics time. <laughs> Very rarely have I ever felt that or experienced it. Um, but knowing that I'm still getting some solid work done is, uh, I don't know, at least at this point, again, to beat a dead horse uh, I, I, I don't feel like I could go back to just waking up going to work and then coming home and trying to do comics it's just not going to work squaring that time away right in the beginning of your day uh, make sure that 
the important things that you need to get done are done. If your job, inv like your day job or whatever, involves you, uh, what is going on with this hand? Holy crap! Um, if your day job involves or is something that you like love doing, like if your day job was comics, let's say, and you're one of those lucky ones, by all means, you know, do what you got to do. You probably don't need that motivation to wake up a little earlier, especially if that is your job. Um, but if uh, you're like me, a lot of other people that are just trying to find time when you're working a full-time job to make time, uh, try it out. All right, I'm just gonna shrink this hand up here because this is this is disgusting. A uh, real quick trick in digital, if you're ever confused, I usually put a f face or a hand on a face to give it some scale. If I think I drew it too big, oh, it doesn't look like he's got like a mammoth hand. Nothing wrong with mammoth hands. Uh, da -da. All right, let me just scroll back up there. Um, while I'm reading this, just to give you guys a heads up, uh, there's about four or five minutes left in the show. Um, so I want to take the time real quick to say thanks to everybody that stopped by, that's in the chat, that's keeping this going. Um, but if you're here to ask a question, or if you'd like a question answered, all you got to do is just ask in the chat. Uh, just please just put it in all capitals so when I scroll through I can find it. Uh, uh, Michael Orgaz is saying, uh, this sketch is a little messy, no? Uh, this sketch is horribly messy. Uh, but uh, I got the information that I need. Another thing is I could just make a quick layer to make some guides if I need it. Usually my thumbnails are pretty messy and rough and loose. Shoot from the hip kind of stuff. Enough to get the idea of where I want to go with it. Um, and then I can refine it a little bit in here. But like as you just saw with that hand, I had to make a new layer and draw that hand because it was way too sketchy. There was no, there was no structure to it and it was giving me a little bit of problem. Um... Uh, John saying, interestingly enough, issues three and four were the ones that took me the longest to write to. I think it's that awkward middle phase where you're not in the freshness or the state or of the start, sorry, but the end isn't in sight. And uh, for those that aren't, let me just put that in context. The standard's uh, six issues uh, total, start to end. So I know exactly what he's saying. When you have a brand new idea or an, a fresh idea for a comic, you write that down probably somewhere. And that might be your last issue. That What you just wrote could be the last issue. How are you going to get there? Or it could be the first issue, or the first issue and you want to figure out where the story's going to go. Either way, it usually seems when you're writing, at least to me anyway, that's how it goes. And you build it organically out of an idea. Uh, so in John's case, yeah, once he's written the first script, it's like, okay, well, you know, I got five more of these to write then by issue three there's a lot of writing you've done and there's little things you got to put in there but it's like god you got still gotta do three more and it's an it's a it's an endurance run man uh john's all saying well uh to put it this way i write bi-weekly progress reports to the for the creative team uh including myself and everybody else and this one i'm writing today maybe the first one where there's more than one page done since the last report so you can definitely see the progress uh, which is, I mean, great. Uh, I, I think, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, that something like this where, like, okay, I'm finding something right now that's working for me. I'm sending it out there. We're getting progress. We're getting pages done. Great stuff. I got a creative spark from it. And I have to thank Tyler for that. And even talking to you, everybody else as well, just like the support, right? Like when I, when I sent that email out, everybody replied to me with a solution that they said, maybe try this. And these weren't like just paragraph solutions. You guys spent some time writing these uh, things out. And then applying it and it actually working is giving me like a, like, a, like a B12 shot in a way. And I don't know how long it's going to last. I'm going to ride it till it burns out again. But I'm hoping that it starts to domino down to everybody else. Uh, just essentially what you just said, where you get that burnout around issue three or four, this is issue four, getting that burnout, right? So now it's we're trying to get into that last wind. We're, we're almost there, pushing through it. And uh, when we're done, it's going to look like, man, what was I stressed out about? I wish I could have went back and fixed this, you know? <laughs> you always look back, at, look at, back at it and all that stuff with different eyes. Um, but yeah, once that email goes out, I'm hoping, you know, the rest of everybody else gets jazzed. Again, I can only apologize for... Um, 
bringing the ship down this long kind of thing. Uh, not much you can do, but I'm not going to like tread on it or whatever. But um, John's saying he couldn't get up at 4 a.m., but I think I got up at the same time you did in my time zone. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, these streams right now, at least for the foreseeable future, it helps me wake up at 4 a.m., to be honest with you, to stream. So these streams are 5 to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So actually, the show's about done. I'm just going to quickly check real quick. But uh, whatever your time is right now, wherever you live, subtract an hour from it, and that's when the show starts. So it's going to be every Monday to Friday this time. Uh, follow me on Facebook if you guys want, on my fan page as well. I will let you guys know if something's been canceled, hopefully the night before. And this Thursday, actually, at 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is another stream. So I'm streaming left and right. That one's going to be a little different. I don't think I'm going to be working on the standard. I'll probably just be doing my own stuff. Um, and then I don't know if that one's going to continue. Anyway, we'll get into it. But yeah, for this week, for sure, the streams are at this time. Yes, Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Uh, to continue the metaphor on, I stormed through issues five and six in writing frenzy. Yep, there you go. Uh, is there any? Is there a way of getting the Maru brush in Manga Studio Five? Uh, I believe it is. I think it's called the mapping brush. I believe. Anyway, that's gonna wrap up today's show. Thank you guys again so much for sharing the video, stopping by, saying hello. Awesome conversation. The questions were great. Um, so if you guys are interested in, definitely feel free to stop by tomorrow. I'll see you then. Uh, keep reading comics. Keep making comics. Talk to you tomorrow. And um, wish you all the best. Bye.